another amazing article for the history books brought to you by realrawnews.com article entitled Hillary Clinton's Military Tribunal Day 2 article posted April 12, 2021 Hillary Clinton's Military Tribunal resumed on Monday morning at Guantanamo Bay following a 72 hour pause that began Thursday afternoon when a disheveled Clinton collapsed to the floor in what seemed like an epileptic seizure but on Saturday, Gitmo's medical staff gave Clinton a clean bill of health, saying she had likely feigned illness to stall the trial. At 10 o'clock a.m. Monday, Vice Admiral John G. Hannock's opening comments derided Clinton's behavior. Hillary Rodham Clinton knows she's guilty. Otherwise, she wouldn't pretend to be sick to delay these proceedings. This woman is thoroughly evil, corrosive, bereft of morality, Vice Admiral Hannock said addressing the three-officer tribunal that will ultimately decide Clinton's fate. Veering from the context of Thursday's interrogation, Vice Admiral Hannock leveled accusations against Clinton that we at RRN, Real Raw News, had not heard before. He produced documentation co connecting Clinton and the Clinton Foundation to the disappearance of 23 Haitian and three American children who were presumably orphaned in, in the aftermath of a massive earthquake that killed an estimated 220,000 people on the island nation in 2010. Since the incident involved American citizens, it was the tribunal's duty to judge Clinton's culpability in the matter, Vice Admiral Hannock said. The three American children, ages 4, 7, and 12, belonged to a humanitarian couple doing missionary work on the island nation. A day after the quake, Haitian authorities found the children and the corpse of an older Haitian woman, apparently their babysitter, in the rubble of their collapsed home. The parents had been volunteering at a village west of Port-au-Prince, near the quake's epicenter. Haitian authorities spent a week searching in vain for the missing parents, but concluded the couple must have perished in the quake. Vice Admiral Hannock told the tribunal that on January 24, 2010, Hillary Clinton, then head Secretary of State, contacted Haitian President Rene Preval and said she wished to aid parentless children whose lives the earthquake had shattered. Vice Admiral Hannock showed the tribunal a chain of email correspondence between Clinton and Preval. In one letter, Clinton stated explicitly that the overture to care for orphan children was made on behalf of the Clinton Foundation, not the U.S. government, and that the Foundation would find foster homes for the children until such time that they could be properly adopted. Preval believed that she was sincere, and when he told her about the three American kids, she told him she'd take care of them too. But Clinton had ul ulterior motives, the evidence shows. She never ran this through the State Department, of which she was in charge. No, the Clinton Foundation chartered a boat to get those kids off the island, a boat that picked them up in Haiti and then vanished from the face of the planet. Neither state nor health and human services had any record of the American children setting foot on American soil. Not the Haitian children either. Well, where did they all go? Did they vanish into thin air? You made the offer, your name is on the emails, your foundation arranged transportation. Do you have anything to say? Clinton had not uttered a word since the proceedings began, but she said, you'd have to ask the Clinton Foundation. You are the foundation, Vice Admiral Hannock retorted. The Clinton Foundation is a foundation in name only. You and it are the same entity. Clinton sat bone still and lapsed into silence. Then Vice Admiral Hannock introduced a material witness, former Clinton Foundation accountant Bethany Greenbaum, who via Zoom testified to Clinton's criminality. The Clinton Foundation, she said, had paid IYC Yacht Solutions, which runs from Spain, $3 million for a week-long yacht rental. Greenbaum called the 145-foot Bliss a party boat with hot tubs, a sauna, and a loaded minibar. I know the ship was delivered to Miami with orders to sell for Haiti. Beyond that, I don't know anything, and I was smart enough to not ask questions, Greenbaum had told the tribunal. But the defendant, Hillary Rodham Clinton, approved the expenditure? Vice Hannock asked. Yes, she did. Yes, Greenbaum replied. After a brief recess, Vice Admiral Hannock said Italian authorities and IYC yachting refused to cooperate in the military's investigation of Hillary Clinton. We thought they'd help, but they didn't. The defendant was a powerful and protected woman. Consider this. The average cost for renting a luxury yacht for a week in 2010 was, say, give or, give or take 300 grand. Yet Clinton paid 10 times that much. Why? She certainly isn't charitable or a philanthropist. She paid for their silence. That's what she bought for $3 million, Vice Admiral Hannock postulated. 
Hillary Clinton in 2010 was arguably, arguably the most powerful woman on the planet. As Secretary of State, she wielded practically limitless power. As a government official, she could have rescued those children using official channels, but she was running a side business. The military argues that Clinton trafficked those children for personal profit, probably much more than the $3 million she spent getting them out of Haiti. This is what you three officers must decide, Vice Admiral Hannick continued. He ordered recess until 2.30 p.m. Part 2 will be in the next video. This is part two of day two, Hillary Clinton's military tribunal at Gitmo. Article dated April 13th, 2021. Brought to you by realrawnews.com. Monday afternoon's proceedings began with a solemn moment of silence to honor the four valiant Americans who tragically lost their lives in Benghazi. Vice Admiral John G. Hanick stood leering down at a shackled Hillary Clinton who noticeably averted her soulless eyes to avoid digital whiteboards that displayed photographs of Ambassador Chris Stevens, Information Officer Sean Smith, and CIA contractors and former Navy SEALs Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty. Their deaths, the Vice Admiral Hannick told the three officer tribunal, were preventable, but Clinton wanted to nurture amenable relations with Libya's provisional government and the anti-American Islamic militant groups that rose to prominence after the killing of Muammar Gaddafi. Detainee Clinton was more interested in making friends with terrorists than she was protecting American lives. For many people, it's easy to forget what happened several years ago, but we cannot forget. We cannot forget that thanks to the detainee's callous disregard for American lives, four Americans went home to their families in a wooden box draped with an American flag, as Admiral Hannick told the tribunal. He asked the two men and one woman on the tribunal to imagine vicariously if they could the terror that Ambassador Stevens must have felt as he choked on black smoke and burned alive after jihadists set fire to the American diplomatic compound, or the exhaustion which Woods and Doherty endured as they, propelled by sheer adrenaline, defended the CIA annex for 13 hours against swarms of encroaching members of Ansar al-Sharia. Clinton's role no longer needs to be ascertained, it's well known. Yes, she has said she had no knowledge of the incursion until it was over, but that's a provable lie. When personnel at the CIA annex saw the diplomatic compound less than a mile away ablaze, they immediately notified Deputy Secretary of State William Burns, Clinton's number two man, and he telegraphed, uh, telephoned Clinton asleep in her bed at 3 a.m. It cannot be begrudged her that and told her that the CIA contractors, knowing the annex would be next to fall, wanted to defend, but Clinton refused. And here's how we know this, Vice Admiral Hennig said. He played an audio recording of a telephone call that transpired that night. It was clearly Clinton's witch cackle talking to Burns. State is under a massive attack. Arrow wants to defend. Arrow, the deep state's code word for the CIA annex. They think they'll be next, Burns said. It's 3 a.m. What do you want me to do about it? Clinton said. Can you give Green uh, Arrow the green light? After a long pause, Clinton said, absolutely not. The last fucking thing we need is to antagonize all Sharia. If this explodes, it could, it could F everything. At that point, Vice Admiral Hannick paused the tape and dropped a bombshell. He asserted Clinton's primary concern was protecting a clandestine government operation, that the diplomatic mission in Benghazi was used by the CIA as a cover to smuggle weapons to anti-Assad rebels in Syria. If the CIA's presence in Benghazi became a, a matter of public record, the arms smuggling operation would collapse and Libya's provisional government would view unfavorably any American feet on Libyan soil. Vice Admiral Hannick let the recording play. Arrow is to stand down. Do you hear me? I don't care what happens next. They are not to move at all. Clinton could be heard saying. But what if Americans die? Woods asked. What happens, happens. Brief me in the morning. I'm going back to bed, Clinton said. Vice Admiral Hannick killed the tape. Do we need to hear more to, to determine her guilt in this matter? I don't think so. The tape speaks for itself. The detainee sitting before you is directly responsible for the deaths of these four men and must be held to account. She's complicit in their deaths and guilty of treason, he said. He asked the tribunal to digest what things they had heard and said proceedings would resume Tuesday afternoon. That is the end of the article, part two of day two of Hillary Clinton's military tribunal at Gitmo. And this is brought to you again by realrawnews.com.